Welcome to Navigating Marketing and AI with Sydney Mullings, the podcast that unravels the dynamic intersection of marketing strategies and the cutting edge world of artificial intelligence. Hi, I'm your host, Sydney Mullings. In this episode, I'm excited to spend some time chatting with Bill Hamilton. Bill is a marketing leader at Microsoft, where he's the head of marketing technology and worldwide marketing operations. In this role, he oversees modern marketing platforms, artificial intelligence, and marketing procedures worldwide. Welcome, Bill. Thanks, Sydney. Excited to be here. I'm so pleased that you've joined us today in this discussion. Um, To get us started, tell me a bit about your background. Yeah, I have a little bit of a hybrid background in that I started my career in IT, working for Deloitte Consulting as a systems analyst, doing a lot of application integration. And then I came to Microsoft and have been in the marketing discipline uh, the entire 18 years here at Microsoft, uh, working in commercial marketing uh, here at corporate and have held a lot of traditional marketing roles along the way. That's awesome. And that's a shared connection for us because I started in IT background as well. So it's really cool to see the the worlds uh, come together. I'd love to hear a bit more about your current role and what you're up to day to day. I work in a group that we call the Global Demand Center at Microsoft, which is essentially responsible for all of the commercial marketing campaigns that we run at Microsoft. My role is to think about uh, the technology, the marketing technology platforms that we use in order to enable those campaigns, and then the marketing operations that we use in, in order to run those campaigns. That's a huge remit, and obviously our (laughs) roles interact all the time. Um, And so that's one of the reasons why I was really excited to get you into this conversation. So how about we start here? Because I know top of mind for many, many marketers, many business leaders is um, how do you balance the need for speed and agility in in what you're doing with the need for security and compliance in, in marketing technology? I'd add one other, which is scale at Microsoft. And so uh, um, kind of agility and scale sometimes don't go as well together (laughs) because if you're trying to build something that is worldwide for a large product portfolio that Microsoft has, it's a big set of machinery that you need to build Mm -hmm. in order to scale. Microsoft runs 10,000 plus events a year, for example. And so how do you build a system that can handle 10,000 plus uh, events in a calendar year? And then, but at the same time, we want to be nimble and agile in the marketing that we're able to do and and be able to turn on a dime. And so uh, part of it is the organizational structure that we use on the team, we have a set of uh, roles and capabilities that are kind of more horizontally aligned that think about standardization and scale and how we do things in repeatable ways. So I'm wondering, with with all of that accountability and all of that need to be both breadth and depth, one of the additional uh, things that is really top of mind for everyone is all of the rapid changes in technology. And the more that we're having AI-infused capabilities, right, that's becoming a reality. How do you foster within your organization that that culture of experimentation? I think as we get into this next era of transformation, which is all going to be about generative AI. We, we kind of went through one period already that I'll call the traditional AI period, which was a lot about using machine learning models and natural language processing and those types of mm-hmm. capabilities in our marketing and um, making sense of lots and lots of marketing data that we have to better inform both marketers and sellers about what's happening in, in their account and help them be successful, to now thinking about how do we apply generative AI to different um, parts of the marketing process, the customer journey, or productivity increases for our our marketers as well. And we think that the faster that we can get through that learning curve, um, the faster we're going to be able to drive innovation and drive transformation using AI. So it's, it's something that we've really, really pushed hard. I'd love to talk a lot about a little bit more for AI is has been this idea of marketing in the area of customer acquisition. And as you mentioned, we've been using 
this uh, idea in our marketing engagement index and using uh, machine learning models in order to um, derive how much our customers or our accounts are engaging with the material we put out. I'd love if you could share a bit about um, what that is and maybe even how it's changed over time. Yeah, so that kind of goes into the first round of transformation Mm -hmm. of marketing at Microsoft that we did that uses some of this traditional AI um, capabilities like machine learning and natural language processing. And so essentially what we did there was put together a system where we're able to capture all of the, we call them demand signals that are Mm -hmm. coming from our prospects and customers. So we apply a set of machine learning models on top of all of that data to help tell us what's working well from a marketing perspective, what's not working well, what are the patterns of journeys that we're seeing. Um, If we send a recommendation over to a seller for a particular customer, what is the probability that that will actually turn into an uh, an opportunity? And then on the sales side, uh, we use all of that information and the ML models to determine what recommendations that we would send to a seller with a rich set of information that says, hey, here's what this customer has been interacting with. Here's the demand signals we're seeing from the customer. Here's the events that they've gone to, the trials that they've signed up for. And here's the people inside of those accounts that are doing those things that we think you you might want to follow up on and see if there's an opportunity there. And that's been really transformational for us uh, in terms of how we think about marketing, how we think about our marketing mix, and how we do connected marketing uh, and sales to to help our sellers be more effective as well. I I love that you went through that. And I know that the, the work that you're doing is so critical in order to help the work that my organization does in a field marketing role to fulfill on what our charter is, which is re-engagement in market. We've been experimenting with all sorts of things as well, using Azure OpenAI as an example and cognitive search to create an assistant for our marketers to help the team quickly pick up on internal information, procedural information, even creative assets, you know, from a single prompt. And so it's so exciting to see how these technologies help us reach out to our customers, help us um, enable our sales force, and also help us enable our own resources internally to be more efficient. Yeah, well, well, the next wave of transformation is really going to come from generative AI, right? Using these large language models people are familiar with, ChatGPT, uh, for example, Uh, in order to transform our marketing. And I really think that there's opportunity along every stage of the marketing process, the buyer's journey, to be able to use generative AI in order to um, create new experiences, get better insights, create more productivity for our Mm -hmm. our marketers. Mm -hmm. And so you could think about the process of uh, creating a creative brief or web content or blog content or email content, Those are all really good use cases in order to use Gen AI Mm. to help you create that content and do it in a a much faster way than has historically been possible. And so you might have to tell it quite a bit about your new product that you want to create a brief around and what the value prop is and what the target audience is and those types of things. The more rich information you can feed in, the better output that you're going to that you're going to get back out. And you you can do that for web page content, blog content, email content, Mm -hmm. social content, uh, so on and so forth. And the thing that we've we found is it will get you probably a 70 to 80 percent, you know, decent first draft. One other experiment that we're doing is um, kind of in the digital realm on websites, customer facing. You could imagine more of an AI guided assistant that is helping you kind of navigate our digital content and helping you get to what uh, you're looking for. Thank you so much for going through that, because I think what you just covered is really the wide array of potential and possibilities that can occur with this technology, all with an eye of creating a better experience for our customers, for providing a more efficiency for our marketers. It's really kind of a magical combination of, of those two things. So, As we wrap up, what advice or what tips would you share for other leaders who are starting to make some of their decisions about how to go down down the path with AI? 
I think that the most important thing, both for the leader and for the organization, is it's all about learning at this point and getting through the learning curve as fast as you possibly can, because um, the the potential for transformation and impact, and, and impact, I think is really, really high. Mm-hmm. And so you wanna do everything that you can to learn as much as you can quickly, to have your people learn as much as they can quickly, to experiment with lots of things, see what works, see what doesn't work, uh, and then build on that knowledge and learning. So having you know, people inside your organization that are gonna be the pioneers mm-hmm. uh, on trying this stuff, and yeah. then you can use those pioneers to educate other pockets and areas of your uh, organization as well. And then a couple of the just lessons learned that, that we've had that I've touched on a little bit, but one is there's tremendous power in being able to tap into the first party data that you have inside your organization Mm -hmm. and apply these generative AI models on top of that to do new things. And then the other thing I think that is, is important is to think about responsible AI and how we're going to use these new technologies in a in a compliant way, in a secure way, in a way that creates great customer experiences for our customers. And so setting up some processes as you um, you know create these projects and, and create these new capabilities to have them run through kind of a uh, a responsible AI governance group and, and test to make sure that you're using things in the right way, in a secure way, and the, the outputs that you're getting are the outputs that uh, that you want. That's amazing. And I love your use of the word pioneer because it really is about getting out and exploring. And so thank you for being a pioneer for all of us here within the company. And um, it's just really been wonderful to spend time with you today. Thank you so much for sharing your story and your insights. Great chatting with you. Thanks for having me on. 